a very warm welcome to my craft room and today I thought I'd show you how you can take a canvas that this one particularly is one that I purchased some time ago a few years back from a thrift store and it obviously had a picture on there so I put it away for another time and today's the day and I thought I would walk you through what it's like to sit down here's my gesso acrylic gesso and show you my thinking process when I sit down to make, well actually I stand up, to make a canvas. Sometimes when I create a canvas it can get overwhelming. You don't know where to start, what to put on it, and I thought today if we together walk through a canvas and I can show you what it's like to take a canvas with a picture on it, take some gesso, cover it up as much as you can, and some crackle paste. This crackle paste, and the reason I'm putting the Indie Stamp Gang spray on here and using my paintbrush, so you can see in 15 minutes this crackle paste will crackle for you. And I'll leave the product uh, in the description, but look at that crackle. You don't need to have an underlay of anything, just lay the crackle down and wait for it to dry. And you can even use your heat tool like I am here and uh, heat it once you've already done it when you apply some liquid and you will activate it again and get some wonderful results. This video is mainly to help you in a sense where I get when I have uh, when you can get overwhelmed with the canvas. You don't know where to start, which objects to uh, that work well on the blank canvas. So I took out some blue fern here and this one has an anchor. I had to I have to be careful what patterns are on this because you could start cutting into it and then all of a sudden you run into that anchor and you think there's just trees. <laughs> so I went through my stash looking for something that would be nice to put as a focal point and these were rather small although I do use a blue fern um, window later on but now I like the fact that we have some base on there with the uh, Lindy Stamp Gang turquoise spray and now I need to find something that's going to work as the focal point. Now Heidi Swap has some wonderful pieces here in the lightweight chipboard. They work very well if you're just going to use them as a stencil and you can get about 10 uses out of them before they start to really uh, take that abuse and fall apart but you can also cut them out and put gesso on them and use them as uh, embellishments. They work lovely. I've used them many times on cards and also on canvas pieces. So you can use either or. It'd be nice to use as a stencil and then put that pattern right on your uh, canvas. And, not, and they come two of each pattern in a set, very affordable, and you get them at Michael's. When I was editing this video, I wanted to make sure that I edited it, edited it, <laughs> so that not so much that I could show you what I did as an end result, but to show you the process. Sometimes when I watch videos, it would be nice if uh, instead of just watching them go through the process quickly, if there was an explanation behind it. And I thought I would do that today. That's why it's a little long but I think we'll enjoy it, both you and I, for the experience. Now beginning this canvas, because it's rather large, I saw this uh, wooden piece at Michael's, I've had it a while, and what I think of is you want to set aside where you're going to have a focal point, but that's where you're going to build a lot of your product around, is that one focal point. So that wants to be rather large. And then I take it and I grab my gesso and I, this gesso is from Michaels as well. And I, I'm showing you these uh, rain, raindrops. I don't end up using those, but, uh, or nor do I use those stencils. <laughs> but you know, you have to put it in the video just in case when you're editing, uh, you end up using it. And I, and I didn't in this case, but I'm just putting a nice light gesso on here. And this particular gesso is very thick. So you can either set it aside on the mat and thin it out and use it, or you can do it like this. And I have this old sheet 
that I put down. As you can see, this way I can fold it and fold it and fold it and get a lot of use out of uh, this on my table. So that's rather nice. And then you can pop it into a separate wash and it'll wash up well. And the reason I like to stand when I craft is because of grabbing certain things. And what I decided to do is use this Tim Holtz Baroque uh, stencil. I love it. And you want to use a nice thick stencil paste. And I went all around that one inch um, edging with this stencil. And um, I use a small palette knife, a plastic one, just a cheap plastic one. And I like the smaller ones and the shorter ones because I find I can feel that paste under it. And you can see how tiny it is. And you can see that my finger is right down onto the actual palette knife. And I spread it out. And the more you spread paste, it heats up and it thins out. So don't always be intimidated by the paste being so thick when you go to uh, emboss. I'm sorry, uh, stencil. Because the more you're wiping it and wiping it, the thinner it does become. And one thing I want to suggest when you're using the a written script stencil is that you apply it, if, if you apply it thick, just make sure that it is a, a layered, scraped very well. Because when you lift it, you don't want to have um, a lot of peaks on it, right? So what I thought was, is I put it up at the top. I'm kind of zooming in so that you can see the Baroque stencil right there on the side. I, that could be one and a half inches deep, too. I, I didn't do the measurements, but I will leave them in the description box. And I wanted to show you just how you start out with it so thick. See the little peak there? But as you're pushing it into this stencil, and one other thing with this um, stencil is the script you want to be careful because it has all of the, it it can chip up like work its way up and look at just beautiful when you release it like this and then take it and make sure you wash it in between if you find it has too much paste on it just go and quickly wash it and come back and start again okay now here is another thought process that i have when doing uh, a canvas and that is textures dimension and textures. You can just about use anything in your craft room as a texture and I find that laces and in this case this braided rope are wonderful. So I'm laying that out and I'm using my hot glue gun and if anything the next day doesn't seem to place well I'll use the E6000 then but I wait to see whether the hot glue will satisfy the certain texture that I do put down. So I've wrapped that around and ran it to the bottom. And that is visually nice when you do that. And, th and you can work with the rule of thirds, bring it up to two thirds and then run it down. And that's very pleasing to the eye when you work it with the rule of thirds. And here I have this uh, uh, frame, but you'll notice I put lace over top of it. I did, I used my Mod Podge and I placed the lace down there's another texture and then I had this uh, frame from Michaels and I put gesso on it and I was going to use this on my album my sewing album but I didn't so it came in handy today and when I'm thinking of this canvas I'm thinking textures so I have the lace on top of the wood I have the braided um, piece on the left and now I'm going to work with something soft and look at this. This was at a thrift store and it is a, um, I'm trying to think, of, it's just a spray. It's just a spray of flowers, but it's beaded work and glass work. There's two leaves that are actually glass on there. Uh, well, acrylic. You can see them. They're beautifully etched. They're gorgeous. And then it had this beautiful silk um, ribbon and so I chose to wave it because that's another texture it's very pleasing very nice and it stays uh, firm once you put your gesso on top of it it will harden and now I'm just making an ocean of waves and going around all of that writing and then I work on filling the blank space 
I don't want to fill too much of the writing space because I put it there, right? So um, I'm going to just work with this beautiful chiffon ribbon and I'm going to run it in the waves uh, to take up space. That's the key to a canvas is knowing how much space to use up and how much to leave. And I struggle with that so many times. Like how much do you put down and how much do you leave so that it really doesn't become overwhelming. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. In the beginning stage of my canvas, I'm thinking more of textures. Uh, soft textures, fine textures, thick uh, textures, and I try to keep with odd numbers of what I am doing here. In some cases, like I put, I had the oval frame, so I put a heart over top of it because then the whole focus will not be on that frame alone. It'll break it up. And then I grabbed some of these um, beautiful falling leaves off of that uh, embroidered lace and I cut them down and I'm putting them off to the side one going one way one going the other so that it takes away from the braid so the braid isn't so um, you know thick and alone so to speak so I hung these little dangles on there and then I decided to pop over and hang them from the bottom portion of the heart down onto the side all the way down and I think that added not only texture but it was visually pleasing. I also look around at what I've used before and see up in that um, top beaded portion there's though that shape of an um, a teardrop well so are these little dangles they have that teardrop look so that kind of drew the eye to both sections and I thought that was nice so in your craft room, look for things that are kind of uh, the same. And also think sometimes less is more. And I try to remember that. Set my um, gesso over to the side. And this is a foam dauber that I bought. Very inexpensive. And you can get them at any craft store. And it has a handle on it. And I really like that. So I'm dabbing it into my gesso. I did put a little bit of water down just to, so it wasn't so thick, just a little bit, not too much. I do like it being thick. And I'm applying it because I know I'm not going to keep it white and like this. But if you were doing a wedding, that would be lovely. And I'm making sure that I clean it out. I'm one to clean in between my projects because I don't want one product going into another product. So it only takes a minute to wash it up and then squeeze it into a towel and start over. And if you're finding your ideas are not coming to you, start adding little things like this little cluster that I got out of a veil and I put that down and applied it while I'm looking around to see where I'm going to start next. And I wanted to remind you that gesso is just helping you when you spray. And here's a beautiful bow I got out of a vintage wedding dress. I'm setting that down because that is my focal point. That Whole, everything that's happening on that oval with the lace over top of the oval is my focal point. And so I want my things to be large on that section. And then I use those little flowers and they are, I'm trying to get that off but it didn't come on. I thought it was a bit bulky but that's okay. I worked around it. And now we have to think of the clear, the way that that painting is showing through the gesso. And the way to get that, to relieve that, if you have something drawn on there, is just to put something darker on the inside. A friend of mine, she uh, reminded me of this. If you put dark behind it, you're not going to see it through the gesso. And boy, was she right. This placemat from the dollar store was perfect because it has that plastic on the inside. You're not going to see this because you'll see why later but it hid the in the light. When the light shines through now, you do not see that bathtub <laughs> that was painted on there before. This was perfect because it had that vinyl. And um, yeah, I was really thrilled. So I'm just making sure that it's secure with the glue and then we're gonna move on to the doily. This is the lace that my sister brought me. Remember I showed you in the haul? And now I love that diamond center and 
actually look at the flowers they both fit in the corners so as long as I can pull it and keep it somewhat symmetrical keep that diamond shape which is close to the image that is going to be my focal point on the front it's going to be awesome and even though you're not going to see it you know that you've taken care of the back and the sunlight is not going to show through and show whatever is on the opposite page of the canvas and you want to pull on this because in time like everything uh, even with ourselves <laughs> we kind of sag and okay I'll speak for myself and uh, you want to make sure that it's pulled nice and tight and it'll last for a good long time and then the lace is going to look so pretty going around there because when you turn it around you're just going to see a hint of the lace and and that's another wonderful piece of uh, dimension in a sense and uh, fabric that we're going to be able to see and I think that's pretty nice and I appreciate you watching it like this because this was actually five hours of film I had to bring down to a reasonable time in the edit and still wanted to give you um, a little bit of inspiration to grab a canvas that you find even if it has a picture on it I know I see them at my dollar store when nothing's a dollar all the time with pictures and I'm never worried about that because now I know I can cover it with a dollar store um, placemat that has that dark vinyl on it and the sunlight will never show through the image so that's nice so now I'm taking this uh, piece of one of the uh, pieces I cut off here and you don't want to waste it so I'm just going to roll it up and what I do is I twist it and twist it and then I just roll it around and eventually eventually it will have an uh, image somewhat to a rose <clears throat> and what I thought of after this this would make a nice little um, bird's nest if you went in the theme of birds and you know outdoors this would be kind of nice and all you're doing is twisting it and twisting it and actually <clears throat> excuse me I'm losing my voice I apologize here but uh, I burnt my finger on this uh, yeah because you forget that it's lace and it has holes in it and here I am touching it and every time you see me punch back I, I burnt my finger <laughs> yeah where are those finger tabs you're saying I know they're sitting right there to the left Anywho, this is a fun canvas and I think you'll really enjoy just looking around your craft room for those things you have lying around and find all kinds of different uh, textures and fabrics and wood and metal and apply it to your project. It's, it's a lot of fun. Now here we are. I set it right on top of the heart. I thought that was nice trying to keep everything in there and that middle of the bow I put a lock it was like a, lo um, a long metal lock and I think these I, these are from Tim Holtz and this is nice and small I really like the way it fanned out like the bow and uh, I grabbed a key but I put the key on the right hand corner and I ended up taking it off because there was too much metal on the one side so I left it there and I'm going to move on and here that's the daisy lace that I have I'm going to put it on this side and as you notice I'm keeping the um, the depth of the frame pretty clear I like the, sh the showing of the baroque so uh, with the texture paste so I'm just going to glue gun this piece down that's going to give me some more texture just a little bit heavier than the actual ribbon over there and this was on the veil with the little beads of pearl and I added pearl with that rose with the lace so I thought this would be nice I just twisted it around to give it a little bit of um, dimension and I love the way if you cover a frame with lace how nice it turns out when you spray it it is really pretty and here I'm just um, trying to figure out which areas I want to build up. Now I don't want to build up any area more than my focal point. So I don't mind filling up the left space with some different flowers. And as you can see, I pulled off two satin roses off of uh, that one headpiece right there. 
and uh, isn't that baroque beautiful and I'm just going around to show you and it's really nice that turquoise spray of the Lindy Stamp Gang just shone through enough to show you that crackle and uh, really pretty so you it shows you where you can set stuff and where you don't want to set stuff because you don't want to cover that beautiful uh, crackle now I'm always thinking of texture 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 yeah and uh, just like Marsha 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 I remember that from years gone by you always want to think of your fabrics and you don't want things overwhelming on your focal point right so I thought these flowers were perfect right here because in the back of my mind I know I'm going to spray it with the Lindy Stamp Gang sprays and the Tim Holtz Distress sprays and here's the button different texture it's the wood and there are other pieces of wood on there so you've got the metal here's um, this is I think recollections in the wedding section I bought years ago I've been um, whenever they go on sale I buy them and then I use my coupon when you get 10% off sale items so it really helps and I'm just going to use the smaller of the two because it has the diamond bling and it's a twisted uh, rose which is like the one I made so that's similar but this is silk so you're dealing with a ton of different textures and that's what's so beautiful about a canvas and I'm hoping that uh, somebody will like this and you know I can give it as a gift or um, you know I could sell it whatever I have to do here and um, it'll brighten somebody's room so here I taken a placemat another placemat in one of my thrift store hauls and the corners were all these flowers I don't want to cover up the Baroque but I do want to place this because it's beautiful linen another fabric and another texture so as many textures as I can get on a canvas without overdoing it I try to apply on there and I just walk around you know I keep the film going and I walk around to see what I have in my room this took an entire day off and on of uh, thinking of things that I could put on there and you know checking in this drawer and that drawer this is tool I tied in a knot more texture and I love tool and this is the thicker tool so when you add gesso to tool wait till you see it the gesso will suck onto the sprays that you use and it'll be beautiful just beautiful um, all these textures when you apply gesso no matter what spot you apply it in it's gonna look beautiful now these flowers I've been hoarding for a long time too and the reason I like these for canvas they're twofold you have the flower on top that beautiful silk flower but you have this metal button thing that was on the bottom and I rip it off and I'm going to use I use the two colors another thing to remember when you do a canvas never look at the colors you're using because if you're going to apply your gesso to the top of them you're not going to see the color you're going to replenish it with another color which is fantastic I wanted to keep in certain textures that I used in this canvas for you so that I could uh, encourage you and it encourages me just to watch this edit actually to see some of the things I would uh, you know add to it if I had to do it over again look at that the metal beside the lace I love laces I love applique I am falling in love with everything about it and that's why I did this canvas I was going to do an album a lace album and I saw this out this canvas laying around and I knew one day I wanted to see how much gesso it would take to cover it and uh, I love using deep canvases you know with a nice thick edge so this was perfect and this beautiful flower it's almost like I don't know and it has I want to bring this I'm, I'm putting it everywhere so I can gab here you can tell it would never go there there's just too much that silk rose at the bottom was enough and I don't want to cover up the script and I don't want to cover up the image of a heart either so I decided for the top but it has the raindrop petals which matches the raindrop sequin and it matches the raindrop in the um, lace the falling lace there that I applied everywhere I think that uh, peach flower is uh, the material is like chiffon 
no, we don't want a big rose. We don't want to add anything bigger, especially to our focal point. You want to see the oval and the heart shape, right? And I have to tell you, when I first started this canvas, I was struggling with the colors, with uh, if I wanted to do flowers, uh, birdhouse. I had a bunch of stuff I had taken out of my stash. And soon as I set down the large focal point piece and I added some lace to it, I'm just showing you there, isn't that metal nice? You know what I put right there? That is a Tim Holtz dresser drawer part. And I set it on top of the round metal so that was metal on metal, lifted it up. Ah, oh, it was fabulous. Then I took that key off and I'm thinking, okay, where am I going to put that key? I don't want it too close to the keyhole. So I put it over on the left, just above the ribbon. So the soft ribbon and then bam, you have that metal. And then I put the round um, button that's wood and then the wooden flourish because those flourishes right there in the wood will match the damask pattern going across. And that's always nice and always look past the colors. Just worry about your textures and keeping your focal point the main object of your canvas. Cheesecloth. Can I say anything else about cheesecloth? I'm snuggling it in, the second piece. Uh, you can see through it, which is wonderful. I'm putting it under the tool, which gives you double the amount of texture. And then I just take a, a paintbrush. I love to use long handle paintbrushes when I do my mixed media because I can push my hand up and I can see what I'm doing. My fist is not down in the work. It raises it up so I can watch um, how I'm applying things. And here's a beautiful button. And this button had metal um, like rope going around it, which matched the rope on that piece of um, ribbon going down the left hand side there, that twine. Uh, the word will come to me here. But uh, now it's just little placement. I'm going into my little uh, stash of flowers. And they're the cheaper flowers. They're those polyester roses. But I'm going to tell you, they work wonderfully when they're gessoed. So never worry. This is a boggle, bobble, whatever you call it. It is a rose round. It was on a bracelet. Um, and then I'm adding uh, carnation and that purple and yellow flower that is gorgeous those are waxed roses I love them and I love those dollar store uh, Michaels actually roses they're the paper roses they come in a pack uh, four for 50 cents right there I'm holding one I just don't know what I'm gonna do with it and then I set it right at the top away from all the big uh, I don't want to add anything to each corner you I try to stick to one large object and then I work my way down and then I always work in kind of like a damask shape when I'm working it that's a feather I'm pointing to right there in between each of those larger flowers on the left right where that rose was I'm trying to find a place for that and if you can't find anything just set it somewhere and watch it for a little while and see what you think I'm just placing down those little rosettes from Tim Holtz that came out a few years back and then we're going to move on to the polyester lace. I love this lace because it absorbs color very easily especially sprays. So uh, if you don't want it to uh, get a lot of color on there you're going to want to protect it when you're spraying the opposite side. And I put down Dreams of Cotton Candy because it did look like cotton candy but I think I'm going to put cotton candy floral or cotton candy garden that's what it reminds me of a cotton candy garden it is just has that and it's funny because the Lindy Stamp Gang uh, pink spray is called cotton candy so what better way to uh, name your project and uh, here I'm using I'm twisting the ends of the wires around a paintbrush and these are waxed roses. They, they actually have wax on them. I got it at a thrift store. And on top of this uh, cheesecloth, I thought that this blue fern window right there would look magnificent. 
right there. Isn't it just perfect to go with flowers and outdoors and the cheesecloth just gives it so much texture. It's beautiful, but I didn't want to run any flowers down it. I'm still adding. As you look at things, you're going to, there, I'm just showing you around all of the edges. Uh, you're going to add a few things here and there. And I had this uh, clothes peg <laughs> and I wanted to add more wood. So that element, I just left it right there. I don't think that's where I place it, but we'll see. And now comes out my sponge dauber. Love this thing. And um, I'm putting gesso wherever I want my sprays to attach itself to. And it's a wonderful covering gesso. And you have to look at it like uh, whatever you gesso is where the color will stay. And I think it looks really pretty to do it all in the white with the blue background as well. See the feather right there? And um, I end up, uh, what beautiful texture, I'm just going to jump in again, that a feather makes when you apply sprays. Wait till you see it and a tad bit of gesso on the edges of the feathers. It looks beautiful. So now I'm making sure that wherever I want the sprays to stick, I add the gesso and I make it quite thick as you can see on the left side there. I lift things, I apply it and now I'm drying it. And when you dry it with your heat tool, remember you have ribbon, especially this uh, wonderful uh, soft textured ribbon. You have to keep the heat away from it or it's going to curl. But even that look would be fantastic. <laughs> you can always get a wonderful texture with anything you do there and doesn't the focal point look sweet I think it really looks nice and look at I didn't really mess up that much of the sheet uh, to have to wash for my next project and here goes the Lindy Stamp Gang sprays so I'll just mention the color I won't give you the names but I will mention the colors I started with Lindy Stamp Gang sprays then I move on to the Tim Holtz sprays so this is a soft soft lavender and when I pick it up, it's because I'm moving it to, to different spots. I'm setting some paper towel underneath because it was traveling. And isn't that funny? I had a bowl of, up in the right-hand corner, I had a couple of french fries. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't eat them after that. I set them there. I was kind of picking at them as I was working. I have to tell you because you're wondering, what is up there in that bowl? Yeah, that's about five little french fries left. I was nibbling on. So let's move on. My, je my gesso's dry. That's important. You want to have it dry. And now I'm going into the bronze and brown tones. And I grab my blues. And a lot of these hues have gold behind them in the Lindy Stamp Gang. I'm not sure which line I'm using here, uh, but it has a gold hue and I'm letting it run into the ribbon. And you want to keep a paper towel close by because you can always pick it up from the gesso. You don't have to worry about that. If you don't like the color, press down on it and apply gesso with that daubing sponge. Those daubing sponges are fantastic for applying gesso instead of using um, a paintbrush. I, I love the way it absorbs the gesso. So here now I'm going to go in with more of the brown and golds with the lavender. It looks really pretty. But it really, you have to dab down on this. A lot of this I want to sneak it underneath a lot of the fabrics to have that hue under there. And then wherever you want green, if you don't have leaves, see my two uh, acrylic glass, they're see-through leaves there. I want them... Uh, to have an undertone of blue and then green on top. So whatever I want is an undertone, I spray first. And there, see how you get the blue-green? It's just beautiful. And I am applying, uh, I have uh, gesso on my couple of my fingers. So I will dab and then apply gesso wherever I want it to have. If it's too vibrant, I tone it down by dabbing gesso with my finger. Uh, at one point I have, I'm going crazy with the gesso on my fingers because this is where I don't mind getting a mess with my hands is when I create a canvas. I just love it. It goes hand in hand, I think. There's another great way that of spraying different colors is when you apply two different colors, it makes another color. You know, when you put down 
uh, your primaries, you mix it with your secondary colors, any colors. I just experiment. I love, and here I'm taking, I jump in here, but I'm removing it from the polyester lace on the other side. If you don't want it to be really heavily sprayed, because it will get on there if you're spraying on the sides, unless you tuck it under. Sometimes I remember to tuck it under. And now I am, yeah, right here is, uh, I'm spraying just the side and it leaks down into the polyester, but only in odd places, which makes it look beautiful. And see right there on the Baroque, how that lavender and gray mixed together in the white is absolutely stunning. So even applying your paper towel at different spots, the gesso will pick it up, whatever color is saturated on your paper towel. So that's really nice as well. I turn it around to take a look at this side because I, I really like to get um, a look at it on all angles, what the sides colors are, because if you hang this up, you're going to be looking at it at different angles. So I always move my canvas around. And here, um, when I'm looking at it here, believe it or not, I wanted to add black. Uh, on the metal parts. I wanted to bring them up. So I settled with a dark gray um, charcoal in the Tim Holtz spray. Here I'm doing a mustard. I've switched over to Tim Holtz. I'm, yes, I did. I switched over to this, uh, to the uh, mustard color. I love it. I just love it. See the change it makes in your canvas? Uh, it makes a change on everything around you. <laughs> It wasn't that bad of a mess, truly. Um, I didn't have a big enough box to put it in, but boxes, they distract you from looking at the sides. So I like adding the paper towels like this. And yes, I grabbed the worn lipstick and added the reds because I wanted red on my roses. I wanted to have a hint of red, but I will switch back and forth. Look at, I put the yellow, that mustard back in and you can see the red in the upper left corner. That's a vibrant red. And I used picket fence, the white picket fence. That will stick to your gesso and bring it alive with the, a beautiful antique white on top of gesso. So it's the picket fence white and it's beautiful. Now I knew I needed pearls. I knew I needed pearls, a strand of them. So see how I leave them there just till I see if this is where the placement was underneath the window, and it was. So I cut them off at the largest uh, round circle there, and I'm going to start using my um, glue gun. And I don't know if I said it before, but like this morning, I went back to look at, because uh, I did this project yesterday, I went back and I held the project up, and nothing fell. There was a couple of things of questionable that I put the E6000 behind, mostly the metal, but uh, I and I applied the E6000 to rest today, especially if I give this away, um, you want it to make sure it stays on. So that's kind of like what I do. I let it rest overnight and then I, you know, kind of tip it here and there. If anything falls off, I use the E6000, but the glue gun works well for me, the hot glue. And here I'm adding those clear round dots that I have in my stash that look like raindrops. I chose to do this instead of the stamp. I didn't know how the stamp, even using stays on, would settle because it wasn't really dry. So here I'm applying gesso to the tops of everything I want to have more texture and that I want to apply ink to. I, even changing up the color. Some of them I wanted to bring the color to an, a different hue. So to be able to do that, you want to apply a thick amount of your gesso just on your finger and leave some of it white. Oh, what a stunning look it, it leaves when you leave the white gesso. It gives it that shabby chic vintage. <clears throat> Excuse me. And don't be afraid to rub it into the flat parts of your work because it'll mingle with those colors and give it a shadow effect, which is I'm doing way up there. It looks like a deep clouded shadow. It's absolutely scrumptious. Gesso, it's good to keep it on one finger towards the end and just 
put a blob of it to the side and just keep dipping into it. And here's my uh, other feather. See how I put a feather? Because it's so see-through, but I cut the top off. I don't want it to go way up into that linen flower at all. So that gets chopped in half, just in case I don't show you there. And then I put a feather on the side. And the right side um, feather, I don't apply anything. I leave it stark white and puffy. Oh my, it looks beautiful. I'm really happy with this canvas and I hope it will encourage you to take out your sprays, just walk around your craft room in your stash and just grab a bunch of flowers and anything that has texture and start building dimension. Work in the rule of thirds um, as if you can, you know, possibly. It's very pleasing to the eye to do that. And um, here I'm using my tall paintbrush to move the color, I spray it with water to mix them up so that I get soft hues and then I will get some hard hues. And I'm dipping my paintbrush into the gesso and I'm adding it to places I couldn't get in with my finger. I'm spraying this Tim Holtz uh, Deep Burgundy, I can't remember the, the name of this. And when you first look at it like this, you go, oh, you kind of... You know, you're taken back because it's so dark, but honestly, I add that charcoal black gray from Tim Holtz, uh, the black soot, excuse me, that's what it is, and the gray, there's a gray tone I put in there on top of this gesso. And can you see right there on the tool, adding the gesso on your tool, how it brings up the dimension, the curves in it, like you did your ribbon? Gesso will draw the eye that white on the gesso. Well, we're coming down to the finishing sections and even, uh, I was just thinking of this, uh, the direction of your placement, like your flowers going up and down and sideways, it's something to keep into consideration when you're uh, looking for different placement on your canvas. And I sure appreciate all my subscribers, each one of you, and your wonderful comments. And I'm soon approaching 5,000 subscribers, so I'm going to have um, a giveaway for that. I'm thinking this canvas, but we will see. And, um, you know, when that time comes, you never know. And I wanted to mention one more thing. See up in the window there? Um, instead of putting flowers running out of the window, I put a flowered piece of tulle. And it gives the illusion of flowers coming out of the window. So I thought I'd run that by you. And I also like the way those flowers go around the oval in just a third of the oval because it looks like a trellis. And I thought that was kind of pretty as I was looking at things later on. And um, if you have any questions whatsoever about any um, thing I've used on this campus, please leave me a comment. I'll be sure to get right back to you. And here we're using that metallic luster. I love this. And the color name is Champagne. This is really good to use in the valleys of all of your textures because it will draw the eye there because of the shimmer, because of the color of Champagne. It's not stark like gold. So it just gives a whisper of a shadow. And that is really nice effect. And you can use it on all the tips of your flowers to give it that wet look. Really pretty. I highly recommend it. So anyway, you have yourself a blessed week. Thank you for spending this much time with me on this canvas. And I look forward to seeing you soon. And enjoy the pictures. Take care, everybody.